The following video is a tutorial for the basic maintenance of hammerhead mold boltless piercing tools with the power port reverse feature. This tutorial does not cover the service and maintenance of the head assembly. For service information specific to your piercing tool and head assembly, please refer to your operator's manual or contact your local authorized hammerhead trenchless equipment dealer. Before servicing your piercing tool, identify the tool model and the reverse mechanism. Boltless power port tools reverse with a quarter turn of the rear whip hose and have a threaded tail cone that contains no bolts. Inspect the exterior of the tool body. Check for cracks, severe wear, and damage from utility strikes. Boltless power port tools feature either a replaceable or an active head design. Inspect the head assembly for wear. Inspect the whip hose for rips or tears. The head assembly must be replaced when the wear face is worn nearly through to the body. Shown here is an active head model with acceptable wear. Replacement may be required when moderate to severe wear is apparent. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool. The striker should freely float from one end to another. Secure the piercing tool using either a pipe stand or a chain wrench. Remove the external whip hose. To remove the rear assembly, attach the specially designed socket to the tail cone. Loosen and then unscrew the tail cone and the rear anvil from the body. If the rear anvil does not screw off with the entire assembly, use an open face wrench to remove the rear anvil. Clean the rear assembly. And finally, slide out the striker. Be careful not to damage the internal body threads. There are three major components to all hammerhead mole piercing tools. The body assembly, striker, and rear assembly. Inspect the tool body for debris. Clean the interior of the tool body by brushing or swabbing. Remove the rings off the striker and inspect and clean the ring grooves with a wire brush or wire wheel. Do not grind, polish, or sand the striker. Inspect the ring grooves. The grooves must be square. Worn ring grooves may cause poor performance and the striker should be replaced. Inspect the length of the striker body for cracks, fractures, or any other external damage. Cracked or fractured strikers must be replaced. Perform an internal inspection of the striker bore for debris. Brush and swab as necessary. Clean the striker rings and install on the striker. Check the striker rings for wear with a straight edge. The rings should stand proud of the ring groove. Shown here is a ring in need of replacement. Notice the gap between the straight edge and the ring. Check the ring gaps with two U.S. quarters. Consult the operator's manual for exact ring gap specifications. Trim the rings if necessary. Before reinstalling the striker, lubricate the tool body and striker rings. Install the striker into the body. Inspect the rear assembly and clear any debris or blockage. The rings on a power port valve should stand proud when centering the rings by hand. Rings must be replaced when side-to-side -side movement is apparent or the ring does not stand proud of the valve. Check to see if the control stud is at the bottom of the detent slot. If damaged, service is required to further inspect the control stem and control sleeve.
Please refer to your operator's manual or contact your local authorized Hammerhead Trenchless Equipment dealer. This valve displays acceptable wear. This valve needs immediate replacement. Inspect the control sleeve. The sleeve must be translucent and free of rips or tears. Any solid colored sleeves must be replaced. The control sleeve should act as a spring. Measure the length of the compressed valve assembly from the base of the anvil to the top of the valve. The control stem should be replaced if its length is more than plus or minus one sixteenth of an inch from the manufacturer's specification. Inspect the rear anvil. Rear anvils with broken threads should be replaced. If replacing the valve rings, first remove the valve from the control stem. Remove the control stud with the socket provided with your piercing tool. Remove the rings with a utility knife. Prepare the new valve rings by stretching and warming the material. Place the rings onto the valve. Slide the provided hose clamp assembly over the valve ring and tighten. After at least two minutes, remove the hose clamp assembly and repeat on the other valve ring. Remove the hose clamps from the valve. Slide the valve onto the rear assembly, aligning the notches on the valve. Apply anti-seize to the control stud and install. Torque the control stud to manufacturer's specifications found in your operator's manual. Before installing the rear assembly, lubricate the valve rings and the striker bore. Apply anti-seize to the rear anvil and the body threads. Install the rear assembly into the body hand tight. Apply anti-seize to the tail cone ID and the OD of the rear anvil. And thread the tail cone onto the rear anvil. Place the tail cone socket on the tail cone and position the wrench at the 2 o'clock position. Using a torque wrench, torque the tail cone to the manufacturer's specification located in the operator's manual. Finish the reassembly by tightening the rear whip hose with an open face wrench. Perform a tip test to assure the striker is sliding freely within the body. Tip the tool. The striker should freely float from one end to another. Following a regular maintenance schedule will keep your hammerhead mole piercing tools running at maximum efficiency.